John Castro, I'm a senior from Omaha South. And this piece is titled Mr. Bubbles. As vivid as the brown paper bag my memory is, I remember my pop's old drink, his remedy for the past, present, and future, the luscious liquid more costly than gold that he longed to have run down his soul. When his eyes locked on target, he was on the prowl. I remember hearing his deep breath and seeing his skin shine in the dim gas station light. Not once he'd look back. My own vampire lord arising from the crypt, just like in the movies. One by one, he possessed his victims wholly, entirely, with an insatiable thirst for more. No one, not even I, would stand in his way. It never left his grip. The cashier couldn't scan it. Not even the car could hold it safe. And I, presumably his only son, could not share in one sip and share in the obvious pleasure this treat delighted him with. Being a forlorn four-year-old sucks. When people say being a third wheel is not preferred, they have no idea. I have his blood, his face, his fat nose, and squinty eyes, but when will I hold his heart? When will he hold my hand, listen to my voice? Is it because I don't have his skin, his hair, his short height, the fashion sense? His mind? How can two people so similar be so unalike? Mr. Bubbles, I came to call it. Senor, any time drink. Sir, just one more. The revealer of all truths, it seemed, would never leave his side. From the moment I'm in the door, his door is open to grab just one more. In the car, I hear no talking sounds, only bubble sounds to keep me company. I'm right here, I clamor. Hello up there, down here. Can you hear me? Please, just pay an ounce of attention. I know it's late, but it's time for you to take me home. Ears gone, eyes occupied, me forgotten. He will never be my home. I never truly saw what he drank. I only know the brown paper bag and my heart an empty bank <clears throat> with a drink so sweet his little boy couldn't compete. Thank you.